Good morning. Good morning, survivors of narcissistic and abusive personalities. Today I'm going to talk about how narcissists appropriate and pirate our language and our survivor identities. This is kind of complicated, um, but it's also very common and I've seen a lot of it going on lately. So I don't know if this has happened to you or not, but as a survivor or someone who has been targeted by an abusive, narcissistic, manipulative personality, have you heard them talking about all the work they're doing in therapy and what their therapist says and the book that they read um, and the spiritual journey that they're on and the retreat that they went to and um, it, it's just fascinating how they sort of sneak in and walk among us from time to time. Usually we can pick them out pretty quickly, but if it's someone that you have experienced abuse from and they're walking around acting like that they're a survivor of something, like after you guys are divorced or you break up or you've moved out or um, you've started to address your own issues as the result of having been abused by this person and then you hear them or see them uh, talking about on Facebook or maybe directly to you. Um, they are suggesting things to you or to other people having to do with their journey of recovery. <laughs> oh gosh, they are just something else, aren't they? Okay, so I'm going to say this and it's kind of complicated, but stick with me. So if you think about how narcissists cannot put themselves in other people's shoes, right, because they lack basic empathy, what that means is that they have a very limited frame of reference. So you and I, empathic people, we can see things from multiple perspectives, including perspectives that we do not agree with. Um, and so therefore, we can sort of uh, look at the world from several views and, and sort of feel what a person might feel if we were in their shoes. A narcissist can't do that, right? They're not capable of doing that. And sometimes they're good at acting like they can do that. So that takes away all of those perspectives. They have a single frame of reference, which is their reality, which they shape and mold as they go. Right. They decide what the truth is as things are happening. There isn't one truth or reality and facts. It is a, a reality that they morph, shape, and shift to suit their needs. Okay? So, coming from that perspective, what happens is narcissists then picture them as wolves in sheep's clothing, and that sheep's clothing is like Velcro. And they're walking around and they sort of take things that they like or think that will dress them up to look nice or to look like a, um, a kind person or an empathic person or a spiritual person. And, and they'll take those things and wear them around, right, and, and show them off as if that's their exterior and that that's what matches their insides. But actually, it's a wolf in sheep's clothing, right, and that wool, that the sheep's clothing are things that they find places as they go. So one of the things that they find, they find language that will fit their victim narrative, all right? So they take our things and they wear them as their own. And you'll, you'll hear me talk about vultures. At some point, we will talk about vultures. Vultures are narcissists who just happen to be really good at being there when you are picking up the pieces from an abusive relationship. And, and we see this all the time. I say to all of my clients, the person you're dating after the abuser is not your person. <laughs> it will never be the person, your forever person. Um, at minimum, it's going to be practice for you to use your new, to your new tools, right, and boundary setting, so on and so forth. But it's fascinating how I see this pattern of narcissists who present themselves as people who are on the other side of divorce 
and they have, you know, been to therapy supposedly, and they've read these books. And, and so you have survivors, actual legit survivors who think, oh, this person gets it. Oh my God, how lucky am I that they understand what I'm talking about? And they had an abusive childhood too. Now remember, they are doing this, um, you know, uh, soulmate, the, the uh, manufactured soulmate. So beware of that at the beginning. They will appear like they're your soulmate and that's a manufactured soulmate. They're creating that. And one of the things they use to become your manufactured soulmate is the language of survivors. And so we think, wow, you know, this guy or this person is going to really get me. They understand what I've been through. Furthermore, they had an abusive childhood, too. Um, and they, they read the books that I read, um, so on and so forth. Um, so the limited frame of reference makes them have to appropriate or pirate or steal um, things that really don't belong to them and wear them around as their own. And then they become attractive to us because of this, right? So this helps vultures obtain targets by wearing our things and then we become attracted to it. Um, the other thing is that, and I mentioned this a second ago, it supports their victim narrative. Remember that narcissists are always the victim. They're constantly, we're always battling over victimhood, right? Like, no, I'm the victim. No, I'm the victim, you know? And, and they truly believe that despite everything they've done to you and everything they've taken from you, that they are the, the victim. And that uh, the reason things didn't go their way is because people weren't acting right and you, you know, couldn't just shut up and be happy. Um, you were ungrateful. Uh, you were crazy, so on and so forth, whatever it is they're telling people about you. Um, so I think that it's important to consider with, that we can't really confront them right on on these issues because we're supposed to be no contact in gray rock at this point so it's just something to observe and be aware of and i'm just trying to help you understand why it is that they do that but we can't we can't confront them and correct them and call them out it doesn't help and in fact it just continues to feed the victim narrative that they cling to <laughs> uh, so fiercely so the other thing that it does is if you think about the messages that we hear in our books, the Empath Survival Guide, Healing from Hidden Abuse, although I don't think that they would be reading that one. Um, but, you know, Eckhart Tolle, Brene Brown, you know, the, the people who are, um, you know, shaping the self-help world now currently and teaching us about a new spiritual journey. Um, it's talking about things like... Um, taking your power back. It's talking about, you know, putting yourself first. Oh my God, who would love to hear that more than a narcissist? You should put yourself first. You know, you should put your needs first. Narcissists love that. They love that because they already do that. So it affirms them. Um, so you have that limited frame of reference. It helps them obtain future targets because many of them are what we what I call vultures. Um, it also supports their victim narrative, and it fuels them. It it speaks to what drives them already because we have to be told and given permission to put our needs first. We have to be told and given permission that it's okay to say how you feel about things and be genuine um, and to seek happiness and to, um, you know, stop the bleeding in terms of how we're codependent and we give, 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 give. Um, so we need to be told, you got to take care of yourself. You know, self-care is important and, and boundaries, you know, uh, don't let people walk all over you. Uh, and, and if you're a narcissist, that's like, well, yeah, <laughs> you know, like that sounds great to me. So here's a book that validates my victim narrative, my need to, to always think of myself and only myself. Um, and furthermore, this looks really good to, to women uh, who are survivors and men, but this is going to help me obtain uh, more fuel from actual humans. So, 
again, this is a little bit confusing. I hope it's helpful. If you have uh, examples of this, please share. Um, recently, there's been a hilarious um, example that um, I can't share a lot of details about, but this person, you know, took one of our books that we read that is meant for us and then um, was suggesting it to someone who's trying to set boundaries with him and and saying that, you know, he's been um, on this spiritual journey and this book has helped him so much and he thinks that this will help her as well to, you know, overcome her issues as if he knows what her issues are. Um, anyway, so next week we're going to talk about the holidays. The holidays are coming up and I know that for a lot of people, the holidays can be really miserable. If you're dealing with abusive or toxic families or parents, the holidays can be just a living nightmare for so many people. So we're going to talk more about that next week. Um, and you guys have a great day. Bye.